What's up guys, Alexander here with Date Psychology. Today I want to talk to you about the evolutionary psychology of Robin Hood. We're going to use Robin Hood as an example to illustrate some basic principles, some concepts within evolutionary psychology that we know fairly well about. Some of this information will be familiar to you guys already if you're familiar with evolutionary psychology. Specifically, we're going to talk about it in the context of mate selection and what makes a man attractive to women. So, what Robin Hood am I talking about? Is it one of these guys here? Errol Flynn, Kevin Costner. It's not any of those. Maybe it will surprise you. We're going to talk about Disney's Robin Hood, the animated fox. So, I ran a poll, just a fun little thing, and I asked women, I said, who would you rather date? Do you want to date Brad Pitt from Fight Club? Or do you want to date the fox? from Disney's 1973 Robin Hood. 76% of women, sample size of 2,274, said they would prefer to date the fox from Robin Hood. Surprising? Maybe, maybe not. I guess that depends on how well you really understand women, right? Brad Pitt is a sex symbol, at least the body, right? At least as an actor. But we're talking about the characters here how women responded. Why might that be? Well, should we believe this is even true, right? Probably. I'll tell you why. Robin Hood is an archetype, right? This is something that Jordan Peterson has talked about a little bit, particularly in the context of Disney movies, that these take archetypes from our collective unconscious, right? And you don't have to interpret this from a Jungian point of view. You can simply say, okay, we see these patterns, these stereotypes, and we capture them. This is called, you know, stereotype accuracy. One of the well-replicated things in psychology. We talk a lot about stereotypes being, you know, you shouldn't believe stereotypes. It's unfair and all of that. No, no. Stereotypes are very often actually quite accurate. And archetype or stereotype, whatever the case may be, these things often capture uh, collections of behaviors and traits that depict individuals. And in the case of Robin Hood, what we see are a lot of traits that women find attractive, clustered into one. But certainly when I ran this, so a poll, a lot of responses and a lot of comments, right? Because this was just a simple Twitter poll. People did not like, some people did not like this. I think most people did. But here are some very serious skeptics, people that were very skeptical. We have one, he said, how the fuck is that serious proof of anything? Have you seen the stats from dating apps? Even that offers a way more solid perspective of women's actual preferences. I don't know if we have any statistics on how many times Robin Hood gets swiped on, how many times Brad Pitt gets swiped on. Can we learn anything from dating apps about which of these two characters women? Probably not. So the same guy says, I know these tweets also imply tacitly that women actually prefer a poor, mediocre fox over someone on the attractiveness level of Brad Pitt which is straight up deceitful and goes against the research about female hypergamy and women being extremely nitpicking. So one, that's not hypergamy, right? Something that people get wrong a lot about hypergamy is they interpret selection of someone who is attractive to be hypergamous, but hypergamy refers to a selection up or down in status. So if we're talking about the character from Fight Club, we have someone that's basically at the bottom of society, right? But who is attractive? So this would actually be an example, something that, that we can see, now and then, of a hypogamous selection for attractiveness, right? Selection downward. But whatever the case may be, is Robin Hood even a mediocre fox? I think the women who responded might disagree. This guy says, are you dumb? A self-report, LOL. And this other guy says, he does not care at all. This guy dismisses what he considers to be manosphere incel memes in favor of his own research that's based on freaking Twitter polling and uses a laughably biased sample. He panders to feminist women. So, is that the case? Typically, many of the women in my polls, when I uh, examine political ideology or attitudes toward feminine, are actually not, or feminism, I should say, are not actually feminist, but that's one of those things, right? Where if uh, you are not on the ideological extreme and someone is, anything you say will be the opposite, right? Feminist, liberal, whatever the case may be. So, here are some other comments. Let's see. I think these are a little bit more insightful as to why women may find Robin Hood attractive. And I wanted to go over these first, because although these did not give an explicit evolutionary analysis of why 
the case may be, I think this might overlap and it might give you some insight into why people said this. Brad Pitt from Fight Club, violent misogynist who lives in a disgusting house. Fox Robin Hood, charming radical socialist wife guy, pillar of community. The choice is obvious to me, said Kate here. So interesting. Uh, one, uh, he's violent, right? So one thing we know from evolutionary psychology is that uh, mating incurs a huge risk to women, okay? A big part of mate selection is the avoidance of harm. So a man who is explicitly violent, uh, it's typically a red flag, contrary to what people seem to misunderstand about bad boys, and we'll get into that a little bit as well. They said as well, disgusting house. Okay, so that's a big one, right? Disgust sensitivity, disease sensitivity, signals of good genes, right? Women, and I mean, you don't have to take an evolutionary perspective on this. Uh, women don't want to be in a dirty environment, right? Obvious. Said, charming, radical, socialist wife guy. So, certainly a lot of debates in the comments. Is Robin Hood a socialist? Is he a... Whatever. Uh, the point here, I think, is that people select partners for whom they perceive to have a similar set of values. So, Robin Hood is an archetype that people very often debate, you know, what is his politics? But the point is that they see in this character values that are similar to their own. So that's one reason. Do women see that in Fight Club? Maybe less. And Wife Guy, right? Okay, so we'll get into this as well. Robin Hood is long-term oriented, right? They see in Robin Hood someone who would be a stable mate choice, which is what women prioritize, right? From the evolutionary perspective. Second guy here, what did he say? He said, Robin's based and wants at least half a dozen kids, right? Boom. So the mating uh, element to it. He's willing to slay enemies for his girl. So we see uh, uh, pro-social aggression and we see protection. We're going to get into that as well. The other one said, uh, well, I'll take the suave cartoon fox working to uh, restore economic justice over <laughs> the embodiment of toxic masculinity. Okay, so again, we see a impression that Robin Hood is consistent with her values in that case. This other guy said, if Tyler Durden was a short, bald man, but with the same personality, he would be considered a creep. Yeah, so this is kind of a black pill take, isn't it, right? That the same behavior would be considered creepy, right? So, but women didn't pick Tyler Durden, did they? They picked Robin Hood. But that's important, though, because we do see that even from this black pill perspective, the behavior kind of matters, you know, and, and I don't think that's what they're trying to say, but kind of gets at that to some extent, that this is behavior in Tyler Durden, right, that is largely antisocial. Another comment here says, dudes on the internet, women are so shallow, they won't have sex with me with a six-pack. Glances at Brad Pitt with a six-pack. Yes, I'll have the cartoon with a nice personality, please. Okay, yeah, so behavior matters, guys, it really does. No one has ever denied this in, in psychology in any field, that behavior matters in partner selection, initial partner selection, what determines if a relationship uh, lasts, the quality of the relationship, it matters, guys. It really does. Here we have another one. Pitt is basically Giga Chad, what latent male homosexuality thinks women want. Fox is closer to women's actual bad boy fantasy, chaotic good. So this kind of refers to what has been called male gaze and female gaze, right? We'll get into this a little bit as well, but Robin Hood, uh, the fox from Disney, has become the centerpiece of a lot of fan fiction, a lot of even erotica and that sort of a thing. Brad Pitt in Fight Club has developed a cult following almost entirely about men. And it's kind of like the research I did on the Giga Chad's face, right? That men found him very attractive, women didn't. It is kind of a male fantasy that Brad Pitt from Fight Club attracts men and the fox from Robin Hood attracts women. Here's some more from Philosopher Cat here. Everything about Robin Hood was great. He stood up against a corrupt prince, values, right? He was kind to others, pro-social behavior, kind to children, family orientation, pro-social behavior. He knew how to sweep a maid off his feet. So, you know, this story is a romance, basically, at least the Disney version. And he was a pro-archer. So, competence, proper prison break. So, bad boy, boom. We have all of these things, right? We're seeing these emerge in the comments that are all consistent with the Evo Psych takes on what women find attractive in men. Here's one from Natalie that says, Obviously, the trouserless fox, brave, has a band of merry friends, knows when to break the rules, is romantic. So bad boy, band of friends. So 
Robin Hood is a leader, guys. Robin Hood has a group of men around him who he leads, and he's kind of at the top of that social hierarchy. Uh, important. Let's go through some of these one by one. Let's first talk about Robin Hood's physical appearance. I know that's a concern for a lot of people. So they picked a voice actor for Robin Hood who is typically considered to be one of the sexiest voice actors of all time. This is really important. There's a lot of research on voice that indicates voices that are deeper in tone are more attractive to women. Robin's was not especially deep, but this is also kind of like dimorphism in the face, that when it's extremely deep, uh, the curve kind of reverses a little bit. So you want a deep voice, not too deep. He has an accent. So accents are another thing that have been studied in the context of attractiveness a little bit. Accents are something that women, depending on the accent, typically find attractive. So we have... You know, they got a voice actor for this cartoon that already, very charismatic as well, the voice acting within it, already that's going to be something that, that is attractive and appealing right off the bat. The face. Let's talk about that a little bit insofar as we can talk about facial attractiveness in a cartoon, right? Disney, very early on, learned how to make all of its characters physically attractive. And it typically made its good characters attractive, not always, you know, there's some exceptions, and its bad characters less attractive. One way they do that is by creating faces for their male characters that have some neonatinous features, but not too much. Large eyes is one example, which is a feature that is found attractive both by men and women in the opposite sex, and a degree of dimorphism that is not too strong. Again, very consistent with research on facial attractiveness, kind of related to the Giga Chad thing, right? That the most dimorphic male faces, the most masculine male faces, are not the most attractive. Neither are the most feminine, Typically, a balance of features is what is desired. Here is a very dimorphic face in the rhinoceros, right? Who's just one of the incidental characters, one of the guards. That would be an example of an extremely dimorphic face. And you can see how they've made this character uh, highly masculine, but small eyes, they made him look kind of stupid. So, not much more to talk about as far as the you know, physical characteristics of a cartoon. The effect of status, let's talk about that. This was something that was mentioned in one of the comments, right? Robin Hood is the leader of a group of men. In this Disney version, you don't actually see the whole band of merry men, but certainly it's discussed and implied. I think everyone knows that goes along with the Robin Hood story. So Robin Hood is the leader of the group, right? He's the boss already. Boom. You have a status effect that is strong. That's something that's going to be appealing to men. And typically things that are appealing to men, and I, and I say in a social sense, not in a romantic sense, are appealing to women in a romantic sense. So most of the status cues that we know about, David Buss has done large very large multinational studies across like 50 different countries on status, very cross-culturally consistent. Being in a leader position is one of those things that men view as high status and that women view as attractive in a partner, both short-term and long-term. Next slide here. So the effect of competence, and I think this again was kind of mentioned in the comments, right? In, in the comments. Robin Hood is skilled at a lot of things. We see this throughout the whole movie. And he's very athletic as well. We also know that athleticism has uh, an impression on perceptions of attractiveness by men of women or the other way around. So notably, you know, he's an archer. He's an expert archer, but he's also an expert sword fighter. He's an expert at disguises. Uh, he is constantly winning, right? He's constantly beating the other men. So you have this competence effect. He's winning. And that's something, you know, I don't know if that sounds shallow or not, but it's something that on average women are going to find attractive. We have the effect of strength and protection. Again, this is something that, that people mentioned when they were describing why they liked Robin Hood. So Robin Hood is not weak. You know, they've drawn him as a small fox. So whatever, that's the way that he is. But he's someone that's not physically weak. You see him throughout the movie winning sword fights and, you know, beating uh, larger opponents, that sort of thing. So he fights other men, right? He's not a pushover. He's not a wimp. So physically, but also as far as behaviorally, he will confront other people and fight. He's brave, you know, tied into that. And importantly, importantly, wrapped up in all of this, because again, this movie is kind of a romance, right? I think you would, I would describe this movie basically more than an action film or even a typical Robin Hood narrative is, is a romance. So he protects the woman. And there's a term, and I'm not sure where I first heard this term, but it's the tender defender, right? And this is kind of the bad boy, the man who can protect who's physically strong enough to use some kind of violence, but who uses it in a pro-social direction specifically to protect women. It seems obvious from the evolutionary point of view that this is a behavior 
that women would prefer. Why? Because men pose a threat to women. So men who will protect a woman from other men may have evolved as a behavior that is attractive, right? What more can be said? Next slide. The effect of intelligence. So this is kind of debated a little bit. Do women select for intelligence? There's some recent research, a very good psychologist who does research on dating and attraction and also statistics. His name is Lars Pinky. He's done a recent study that found, okay, women don't select for intelligence, at least as far as initial selection goes. There's a speed date, right? So you have people in person. Who are they going to go on a date with? They gave them the actual IQ tests and they found, okay, so intelligence doesn't actually predict who gets picked on a first date. So do women actually select for intelligence? You know, the evidence is not entirely clear on that. It might not be the case, but do women select for perceived intelligence? And the answer to that is yes. Women all indicated that the men that they selected were higher in intelligence. So, and individuals that were perceived as higher intelligence were selected. So there might not be an actual selection for measured intelligence, but we know that perceived intelligence is attractive and that women perceive their mates that they do select as more attractive as well. And what do we see in Robin Hood? Well, Robin Hood is a clever guy, you know, more than physical strength. He's going through this whole movie, just outsmarting people. He's, you know, in disguises, he's climbing up walls. He's coming up with clever plans, tricking everyone around him. You know, he's constantly one step ahead of the game. He's kind of that clever, uh, you know, hybrid of outlaw and con artist in that case. So there's a idea that Robin Hood is a smart guy. You can tell as well, from the voice acting, the way, you know, the way they've designed his character. They've made him charismatic. They've made him funny, which are two things that are also associated with intelligence, both perceived intelligence and measured intelligence. So is Robin Hood smart? You know, typically I would, I would think people would say, yeah, maybe that's one element that adds to it that makes him seem attractive. And as we've mentioned a couple of times, Robin Hood is a pro-social bad boy. All right. Robin Hood is an outlaw. He's a criminal. He steals from people right? He fights with a sword. He shoots people with a bow. So he's doing all of these criminal behaviors, but it's never in an abusive way, right? He's not doing it to like innocent people. He's doing it right to the, to the bad guys. So he's, you know, I mean, our Robin Hood is an archetype because of this, right? Bad boy criminal who steals from the rich, who gives to the poor. So we see this perfect combination, right? Of the bad boy archetype, who is also highly pro-social, and we know that these two things are attractive to women independently, right? We know, for example, that the dark triad a little bit uh, on average is associated with higher attractiveness. We know that pro-social behaviors as well are associated with higher attractiveness. And people try to reconcile these two all the time because they think pro-social behavior means being a nice guy. You know, Robin Hood is not a nice guy. He's a, you know, an outlaw. Being a nice guy is not it. That's not what pro-social behavior is. Pro-social behavior means... Uh, acquisition of resources, being able to provide for the people around you. So he's the leader of the group. You know, he's organizing these, these outlaw behaviors. He's the one, you know, stealing. And then he goes and he shares that. So he's providing for everyone else. Classic examples of high status, pro-social behavior, you know, that are not derived from nice guyness or, or weakness, so to speak. And we see that Robin Hood is family oriented. He's oriented toward long-term relationships and long-term mating. This is something that women prefer over short-term attractiveness. And we can see this in a few recent studies as well that found women rate men who have had more sexual partners as less attractive, yet women rate men who are in relationships as more attractive, right? Pre-selection, we'll talk about that. So as I mentioned, this version of Robin Hood is basically a romance. From the very, very beginning of the movie, it's talking about Robin Hood and Little John and talking about, are you going to get married to Maid Marian? Throughout the whole thing, you know, he's rescuing the girl. And of course, it ends in a wedding. So women have a much stronger orientation toward long-term relationships, toward monogamy. Uh, recently, David Buss has said in the most recent Oxford Handbook of Evolutionary Psychology, 2023, one of the articles included in that, he said, you know, most women, I'm just paraphrasing here, most women don't even pursue a short-term mating strategy. This is probably one of the things that the manosphere has gotten wrong over the years is this idea that, that there's these two strategies that are both being pursued at no-no. Women overwhelmingly are long-term relationship oriented, monogamy oriented. They score much lower in sociosexuality, right? The willingness to have casual sex. They want to get married. They want to have kids. What do we see in Robin Hood? And another interesting thing is in one of the first dialogues in this movie, Robin Hood and Little John are talking. And Little John asks, he says, hey, when are you going to finally get married to uh, Maid Marian? 
And Robin Hood says, marriage, I don't know. I don't know if I want to settle down. So we see at the very beginning that Robin Hood is not easy to get, you know, which is kind of classical advice, like play hard to get. I'm not going to tell you like play hard to get, but I am going to say there is an effect of desirability in being just slightly out of reach. So Robin Hood was not a simp, so to speak, right? Robin Hood was kind of, you know, unsure. He didn't know if he wanted to settle down. You know, he's kind of a freewheeling guy, but he is romantic. You know, he does love her. And of course, they do get married. Robin Hood is family oriented. Someone mentioned this in the comments as well. And this occurs in the dialogue of this movie as well. He's talking to Maid Marian. Do you want kids? He says, yes, I want to have, I want to have 10 kids, right? So this is going to be important for mate selection, right? The desire to have a family, the desire to protect a family, right? Why would this be important from an evolutionary perspective? Well, the people that have that desire pass their genes on. Women that select men that have that desire, both to have children as well as to provide resources for those children to stick around in a long-term relationship, have a better chance at survival in those offspring as well. So we can see how these traits may have emerged over time as attractive traits, right? And also we see that the kids, right, in this movie loved him, right? The little kids, the little girl rabbit, she loved him and thought he was dreamy. And the little boy rabbit wanted to be Robin Hood, right? He's dressing up as Robin Hood and all of that. So we see that he's good with kids, you know, in his interaction with the kids in this movie. And also that is, you know, another indicator of status throughout this movie. That everyone thinks Robin Hood is really cool. They love him, right? Top guy. The effect of pre-selection, okay? I mentioned this. Uh, in this case, we see throughout the movie that Robin Hood is described as desirable to the women around him. And I say women around him, there's basically one, right? Which is Maid Marian. And then there's one that's a little rabbit, a child, right? But she thinks Robin Hood is dreamy and Maid Marian loves him. So we see someone that's basically involved in a relationship, right? People get pre-selection wrong a lot. They think that uh, promiscuity, being a player, all of that indicates pre-selection. It doesn't. There's no research that indicates that. In fact, research tends to lean in the other direction. Where does pre-selection come into play? Women view men in relationships as more attractive. Women view men who are married as more attractive. So when a woman sees that you are in a relationship with a woman who loves you, that's a sign. When a woman sees that a man is just having a lot of casual sex, that's not the same, the same signal. And also we see another thing as well, you know, that boys want to be Robin Hood as well. The, you know, they idolize him. So he is a role model in that sense. And again, as I mentioned, the same traits that make men admire a person are also the same traits that make a person attractive, a man attractive to a woman. Looking at this, let's compare with Tyler Durden in Fight Club. Why did he not get picked? He is, of course, one of the most attractive actors in Hollywood classically. You know, you do very informal polls. You ask women like, hey, which of these actors is very attractive? Brad Pitt has always scored pretty high. His body, you know, became a meme in Fight Club. I want to be like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Uh, is this the ideal body for women or men? Maybe, but you know, that women, I don't know. But whatever. We have a Hollywood actor who is conventionally attractive. So why did he score so low? Well, if we're associating him with his character in Fight Club, you know, we have antisocial behavior throughout it, right? He's doing criminal stuff, and it's not even for a good end. Most of it's, it's kind of recreational crime, so to speak. Uh, it's antisocial aggression, right? He's beating people up. I'm not even just talking about like the normal fight things, but even in the context of those organized fights, you see he kind of goes overboard. So he's someone that's kind of unhinged, right? Unhinged, important, because we know in this movie he's mentally ill. And that's a signal of bad genes. Mental illness, you know, uh, sucks. If, if you experience that, I don't mean to be too harsh, but of course, being mentally ill is typically something that women would not want to select for as from that good genes point of view right? We see that Tyler Durden is not oriented toward long-term relationships. He's oriented toward short-term relationships. He has sex with one woman throughout the movie on and off, but doesn't want to have a relationship with her, won't, won't commit or anything like that. The movie became a fantasy for boys, right? So it's a male gaze thing. The whole cult following around Tyler Durden and Fight Club, almost exclusively men. This was never a character that became particularly attractive to women except in the context of, okay, this is a handsome actor. He has a good body in this, in this one scene, right? That's basically what you got. And then kind of like was, what was mentioned in the comments, right? Dirty environment, right? He's someone, he's going to be poor. You know, I'm sorry, guys, but that's less attractive to, to women on average, shallow or not. Be it as it may, it's one of the things, you know, that having a higher income is perceived as more attractive. 
lowest strata of society, kind of a loser, you know, what can be said? Those are all things that may have factored into why, you know, he's getting picked less. Consider this as well, guys. There's an entire genre, I mentioned this at the beginning, of Robin Hood erotica that's written by women and for women. Not always in the Disney Robin Hood erotica, but as far as the archetype of Robin Hood, this is a character that for some reason women find very attractive, okay? This is written, you know, erotica by women. It's read mostly by women. So I think, you know, I'd like to do some research on this, but I think that erotica may provide a good window into women's fantasies, particularly as far as what turns them on, right? Particularly as far as sexual fantasies and what kind of man they would be willing to sleep with. Uh, we see Robin Hood come up a lot in this. We see whole genres of fan fiction about Robin Hood. Even the Disney version, right? Maybe they're furries or something in that case, if they're writing fan fiction about <laughs> Disney's Robin Hood. But whatever the case may be, we see very little for Fight Club, despite the very handsome actor. Uh, it's not something that actually became quite a sex symbol for women. And we see, again, across erotic novels, uh, similar themes. We have a bad boy, right? Some of the top-selling erotic novels, I went through all of these recently for a different project, are of kind of mafia stories, right? They're about criminals. And these criminals, of course, they're doing criminal things, but then when it comes to interaction with a woman, you know, they're a bad boy, but then they're kind of tamed a little bit, and they end up committing, and all of that. And so we see a fantasy where it's like, okay, someone is able to be a bad boy, but at the same time, they're going to treat the woman well, right? A bad boy that's fundamentally good, who is also, you know, it's never someone that's like, like a bad boy, like, okay, he's smoking meth in the trailer park, and, you know, which is much more similar to what actual criminals are like, right? Like, oh, it's an average dude who's, who's like in prison. You know, people get that really wrong when they read about the dark triad, when they read about like, ah, some research indicates that individuals with a criminal record have had more sexual partners, and they think like, oh, yeah, so the average criminal is going to be attractive. I'm afraid not, guys. If you go into a jail and you look around, most of the people look normal like you would expect in, in a shopping mall or whatever. But if you look at their behavior, it's like, oh, what are you in here for? Oh, you know, I'm addicted to drugs. And it's like, yeah, that's not what women find attractive in any of these bad boy narratives. There's not an erotic novel that's like a guy who smokes meth all day and then gets arrested because he got caught with a bunch of meth. You know, that's not the theme of the bad boy that women are attracted to, although that is what actual criminal behavior looks more like. Why do we see more sexual partners associated with actual criminals than on average? Probably because their selection standards are much lower, right? That's kind of what research, past research on the dark triad has indicated that, ah, uh, these people are much less selective in their uh, partner choice. We also know, for example, that more attractive women are more selective in their partner choice, physically attractive as well, that higher status women also are more selective in behavioral choices as well. So you're seeing, you know, men at the lowest stratus of society, they're probably having sex with women who are less attractive on average, who are low status as well. That's how men get a large partner count in kind of that subculture, right? In that element of society. So anyway, short video for today. Hopefully this covered some big core concepts of evolutionary psychology of things that make men on average attractive to women. I wanted to use the Robin Hood example because I thought it'd be fun for you guys. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll try to make another video for you very soon.